Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? This is uh, Brian Casella, team leader of Team BC here in Southern California and Team BC Nationwide. I wanted to shoot a quick video for you to give you an update on kind of what's happening with the real estate market and give you some insight into this weird phenomenon that we're seeing in the continental United States where homes are selling like crazy, there's no inventory, people and buyers are literally jumping over top of each other to purchase homes. As an example, uh, our newest listing here for the team in Southern California, we put it up yesterday at uh, I think 410,000 and in less than 24 hours, we already have four offers and one of which is over 100,000 over the initial asking price, okay? And virtually all the offers have waived the appraisal, the inspection contingency, phone is ringing off the hook, right? And that's just one of the recent listings that we've taken. So we're seeing this happen all across the country and people are asking me and wondering what is going on. And I wanted to do this video just to kind of give people an update, uh, give them some information, some opinions, and also just some facts about what's going on uh, here in the United States. So super low inventory, right? Super low inventory, people waving appraisals, a lot of people buying. And I wanna give you guys the insight, right? Cause now we're still in I don't wanna say the C word, right? So we'll call it the C word. It starts with C, ends with D. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Anything with the mention of that word gets censored, so I'm not gonna say it, okay? But the C and D that we're talking about here has caused a shift. If you guys remember back in March of 2020, it's been over a year since our uh, two weeks to flatten the curve thing. Still in C and D, right? And initially, real estate was shut down. I know in California, we were shut down, I think for at least four to six weeks where we weren't allowed to do open houses, not go to homes. And we had to do everything virtually, right? We were doing uh, client meetings via Zoom and we had a shift right now. Luckily, my company had already kind of made that shift. We're cloud-based at eXp. So that transition for us was a little bit easier. For a lot of other people, it was extremely, extremely uh, difficult and a hard adjustment. So with that said, um, once that started, okay, it had a ripple effect throughout the rest of the world. People who eventually started working or got back into work or remained working during Corona, uh, C and D, sorry, I almost said the word, now are working from home. They're not going to the office or as we see now, office time is limited. So what we're seeing now is a phenomenon where there's a shift in the culture in the sense that, hey, and this is just one of them and I'll explain the others later, I'm not going to be going to the office. I'm going to be dual in the sense that my home space will also be my workspace. Now it's not, it wasn't optional then it was, Hey, this is a requirement. My employer now was requiring me to do it. Okay. We're also seeing, um, a lot of buildings we can say, right? Luxury apartments and condominiums and complexes offering dual living space and workspace. We just featured one here, 1010 Wilshire, right? I'm gonna release that video soon. And virtually their whole building, both of them there in downtown Los Angeles are that. They're, they're spaces that they literally advertise as home slash workspace that come fully furnished and they have work desks and stations and everything that you need. Additionally, right? And I'll get into the details of that one here in a second, but additionally, you have a lot of people fleeing the big cities. You guys know I'm about to close escrow in Miami and I'm moving from Los Angeles. A lot of people are moving out of the bigger cities and going into rural areas or smaller towns or basically getting out of the highly congested and populated areas because of COVID and everything that happened. So those are two factors that we need to look at. People fleeing is obviously gonna drive the prices up in certain cities, of course. That's why you've seen huge price increases in some places like Texas and Florida, for sure. So not only do you have your pent up demand from the lower inventory. Now you have a flood of buyers coming from outside of your state and area and city and county now bidding those prices up too. So that's obviously going to drive the prices up that increased demand. But let's talk about that first one now. Now, even the people that stay locally have a desire, right? A clear desire and a need at this point to do something. People have families, small families, couples, right? Uh, people that have five, six kids. They're saying, Hey, this home that I'm in, I'm going to have to work in and also live in. We've had plenty of clients who have gone above and beyond to get something bigger because now they're taking into account not only themselves and their family, but also the fact that they're going to have to work and create from their space, whether that be a nine to fiver or an entrepreneur. 
I've thought about that for a long time. I always purchase property because I've been an entrepreneur from that sense. I'm sure many entrepreneurs who are watching this will be thinking in that you know same type of thought pattern. But now that has trickled over to the nine to fiver and average everyday consumer because of what happened with the C and D. So you have to understand that that is going to be a major driving force to what we're seeing going on today. A lot of people have pointed to the low interest rates, which are great, and a lot of other factors, but I would say those are the two main factors that are driving this pent up demand. And, it, and we just can't keep up. I think uh, I saw an article released recently that 4 million homes need to be built right now to be able to supply the demand that's out there for home buyers in today's market in the United States. And that's just one article. Who knows if that's correct? I would say it's probably more at this point because of what we're seeing. Inventory levels are super low. I've been in the real estate business now for eight years. I've maybe at one time temporarily saw them this low back in like 2013 and 14, around the time that I started. Other than that, you know, they, they, they've been low, but not this low. This is crazy. Developers aren't even putting their properties on the MLS. For sale by owners are actually selling, right? A lot of things that people would deem crazy now because of the market conditions are actually happening. Now, is this gonna happen forever? No, but I see it continuing this way for at least a year because of some of these things that I've discussed. More people are leaving bigger cities, right? Um, it's tougher for new construction right now because the price of lumber and other things have gone up since uh, Joe Biden became the president. Uh, you can check, I think lumber has gone up, I think two or 300%, and that's just one material cost out of many that has increased, right? We have this, this need for people to have the dual workspace and also the, the living space. And it's just a lot of factors thrown together that now when somebody's thinking long-term, if they're gonna have to make this change, it doesn't seem that bad now to pay 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 over the asking price because they're going to be utilizing that space. It's worth more to them at this point. Not only are they getting a good interest rate, but they're getting what they perceive to be a deal because, hey, this isn't just my home to live in. I'm working here too. So this is like an office. I get my own office space and home. So that makes a lot more sense to me. And I truly believe that that's one of the, those two are the major driving factors. That being the people who are using the space for dual purposes right, because of this whole C and D thing that we have going on, and also the people fleeing some of the major metropolitan cities and moving into, you know, rural areas or, you know, the second cities or places that are a little bit smaller, or individuals like myself who are moving out of state to a completely new city and state, and that, that bringing an extra demand. Because in some cases, like me going from California to Florida, my money goes longer. I can be that person who overbids somebody else because I have a strong motivation to move. I want to get out of California and I have the resources available to me. So that plays a huge factor in it because many of us fleeing the big cities are fleeing higher prices going into a lower price point, right? And that's another thing from a number standpoint that you need to understand is to the guy who has a million dollars paying uh, $30,000 over a $200,000 home to 230 and covering any extra uh, price above the appraisal and any other fees and outbidding all the other buyers is a small price to pay for that peace of mind and comfort that they get to know that they're going to get the home for sure so they can leave their big city. Now to the local, that's going to seem crazy and they're like, man, $30,000 is a lot of money. Yeah, but to the guy who has a million, not so much. So these are just a few things you need to keep in mind. I don't want to keep this uh, video going on too long, but those are some of my thoughts and uh, opinions and some of the facts that I see happening in the real estate market right now. If there's anything else you guys wanna add or anything you're seeing in your local areas, if you wanna sound off in the comment section, right? Let us know where you're from, what you're seeing, what you believe is driving uh, this craziness in your area. But as I said, I don't see this slowing down at least for the next six months to a year, but we'll see, right? We'll see. All right, that's it for this one, guys. Be sure to thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.